Talking today to Steve Oslo of M-Labs. Steve, when is M-Labs launching? So we're officially opening our doors on the 15th of September in Pretoria. We have been operational now already. Uh, we held our first event in Cape Town on Monday night, a workshop on how to monetize your mobile app or content, and we sponsored a mobile Monday in Johannesburg. But the official head office is opening doors yeah, next month. And for those who don't know what M-Labs is, what, what, what have you been set up to do? So essentially we're an incubator for mobile startups. Um, we're part of a broader program where there will be five M-Labs around the world, each serving a region in a developing, kind of developing country's context um, and providing support in terms of business mentoring, office space, testing facilities for different handsets, uh, access to finance, essentially helping entrepreneurs in developing countries to capitalize on this massive mobile opportunity that's, that's, that's out there. And it's a consortium, M-Labs. Who, who's in yes. that consortium? It varies per region. In our consortium, um, we have CSIR Maraca Institute, which is the, the lead organization. Which is the Government Research Institute. Exactly, yeah, based in Pretoria. Across the road from them is a science park called the Innovation Hub, and they're a great partner. We, we based uh, at that space. And then two smaller partners, Ungana Africa and Innovation Lab. Okay, and what's the constituency you're aiming at? Who, how, many, how many of these people are there out there, do you think? That's, that's a hard question. You know, a lot of people are uh, developing in their garages. Uh, a lot of mobile developers are actually sitting in corporate South Africa as well. So it's hard to kind of work out who this community is, and, and that's part of my role. I'm the mobile impact evangelist. Yeah. Um, it's to try and galvanize this community and, and get them out. In terms of, I can tell you who we want to, who we would like to kind of get. Um, certainly entrepreneurs, um, entrepreneurs and mobile developers who um, ideally come from the bottom of the economic pyramid. They don't have to, but certainly that's a constituency that we want to help foster. This is a small business development initiative, essentially creating sustainable businesses in the knowledge economy. That's the broader program. Um, but anybody really is, is welcome. Um, we are hoping to incubate and graduate eight members by the end of next year. So there's a much broader community, and we have community members, and if you sign up to our mailing list, then you're one of those. And then we have silver and gold membership, which people pay for, but it's a much more focused kind of intervention. And is there, is there if iHub has a physical space, do yes. you have physical spaces? Yeah, we do. So in Pretoria, uh, at the Innovation Hub, that's will be our, our physical head office. Um, down in Cape Town, we're based at the Bandwitz Barn. But, you know, we'll work with partners. So um, at, in Cape Town, if somebody needs office space, they can either put up a desk next to me or, you know, we could put them in an office at the Bandwidth Barn, which kind of allows us as MLab to focus on the softer kind of consulting, nurturing... Uh, Advocacy. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, all of those kind of elements. Exactly. Yeah. But I, I should just say that um, we also want mobile initiatives that aren't just high-end, uh, aren't just iPhone apps and iPad apps, also ones that talk to the bottom of the pyramid as well, to, to the mass mm. market. So that's why we're fostering people in the mobile app space but also in the mobile content space. So it could be actually an mHealth SMS content service, and perhaps their model is that they're funded, but we can help structure that and you know, try and get a good, you know, a good bunch of funding for that. And you've just, um, not so long ago, left the Shuttleworth Foundation where yes. you were doing various content projects. Describe those projects to me. Sure. Um, so the main project that I led was called M for Little Mobiles for Literacy. And what we produced was a online library of M novels, mobile novels, called Yoza Cell Phone Stories. And we really wanted to see if the mobile novel phenomenon from Japan had any, you know, any legs in, in, it, in South Africa. So I started this project and it had really good traction. It has had really good traction. Um, I did a, a count this week. So in the last year on Yoza, we've had 300,000 reads of our M novels, we've got poems, we've even got some Shakespeare players. So it's been a really interesting um, pilot, which is now kind of, you know, matured, but to really try and understand what the youth in South Africa will consume on their phones. Mm. 
and for me the big aha moment was that you know you can actually publish a 25 page word document mm. and somebody's going to read it on a samsung e250 which is you know about that big absolutely which you and i would never do but <laughs> but people will do it if yeah. it's affordable enough and engaging enough um, yeah. And you know, if that's all you have, then then that's yeah. where you're at. And how will you take Yoza forward? We're currently currently looking for partners. Um, you want I, sponsors? Sponsors, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, Yoza was funded by the Shuttleworth Foundation. That funding is now ended. So we're actively looking for for partners and, and sponsors, um, either distribution or, as you say, to help with the content generation. Mm. We've always kept the stories free to the end user. Um, but obviously there is a cost attached to producing them. You were asking in the session here at Mobile Entertainment Africa um, what you might charge for a music track. Yeah. And there's, a, as you know, a big debate between charging and free. Um, what's, what's your take in terms of what works and, yeah. and so on and so forth? Because there's a delicate balance between actually staying in business and yeah. actually getting out there. Exactly. You know, one of the biggest challenges for Yoza is sustainability. Um, Yoza doesn't generate any revenue. Um, and we've looked at charging for our content. Um, I personally think that, obviously free is you know, becoming more widely the kind of mm. de facto, but I think that people will pay. Mm. And if something is affordable enough and uh, valuable enough, desirable enough. Mm. So we've played around with kind of price points of where to sell our novels, maybe 99 cents, you know, maybe, mm. that's a, maybe that's a, a, good, you know, mm. a good cost. I did do some research with some township youth here in Cape Town, and the number that came up was five rand as this kind of maximum ceiling. You know, mm. nothing should cost more than that, and that's basically the minimum amount of airtime that you can top up. Mm. So it definitely has to be underneath, you know, under that. Mm. But I think, yeah, I think for me, uh, I think it's okay to charge, but it must be, it must be kind of, it must be affordable. Yeah. Yeah. Steve, thanks for talking to me today. Thanks, Russell.